Hello, everyone, and welcome to Meticulous Talks on August 21st. I am Chris Accords. And I'm Hifrook. It's, uh, have you recovered from Continentals yet? Doctor? No. My sleep schedule is still back. <laughs> yeah, that's probably to be, to be understood. Uh, I am, I am with you in being a little tired right now, I'll tell you that much. Had a really busy week. But it was a ton of fun, right? Not yeah. Animals? Not a single regret for staying uh, up so long. Mm -hmm. uh, you were there just for the core tournament. I was there for both Harmony and the core. Um, but uh, yeah, we saw a lot of we saw a lot of interesting matches from the decks that we knew we were going to see, and a lot of cool decks that we didn't think we were going to see either. Yeah. I mean, we need like, what, three decks? Four decks in advance? But that's about it. Uh, well, yeah, three decks among five players. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that leaves that, like, nine others? No. Wow, I can't even do this math right now. Seven? Seven, thank you. Seven's correct. <laughs> Uh, and it being the week after, it's time to have a look, I including the one uh, top decks deck that we didn't even get to see on stream, which honestly, after looking at it in the results, I'm disappointed because it looks really cool. Yeah. Imagine like top deck sits at the stream and like puts capper will be. Oh, yeah. Really interested. That would have been something. Um, so we're going to start with Core, and we'll see if we have enough time once we get to the end of it to go through Harmony or not. Um, there were 12, as we say, 12, uh, 12 participants due to the two duplicates, 10 unique decks between them. And so, yeah, I feel like we probably should be able to get through it in time to deal with Harmony too. But we'll see. So, starting us off, uh, is Diamond Song Stack. We have seen this one on stream, right? He, well, yes. Everything except for top deck we saw on stream. Uh, she was playing against... Was it Kevin? I think we saw her uh, playing against Kevin. I don't or, or no, like maybe it, it was. It wasn't a Thorax mirror for sure. So no, yeah, Kevin. was it Sokol? Maybe I maybe. remember it was. It was an aggro versus aggro. Hmm. Anyway, um, as we kind of had guessed on stream, it's 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 Thorax Orange, uh, with a few Diamond Song special tweaks. Um, she played against Sokol on stream. Sokol, okay. Uh, we know she's not going to go anywhere without a Novo in her Thorax deck or a Metabooks mask. Um, the Pinkie Pie that we saw on stream is an interesting addition as well. Not impossible to play. There's plenty of ways to get that extra pink wreck. Mm-hmm. Uh, Big Mac, honestly, a, a very good choice against the meta that we saw. Uh, lots of resource removal required. In fact, she's running, uh, the I count nine pieces of resource removal. Is there any more than that? Nine? Oh, yeah. The Big Mac and Brian and friends always there. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. But I mean, Big Mac is a repeatable one, and like the rest of them, you would think nine is enough. It would be, yeah, usually. Certainly compared with uh, some of the others out there. Yeah. Limestone is a very good inclusion as well. Hmm? 
uh, it's a pretty strong card against living to off and against reanimator as well. Uh, yes. Turn late Twilight into just five power thing. Sounds pretty good. Uh, yeah, against Twilight especially, um, with her global benefit to your board. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess the the lesson that we learned from Continentals was that the the really fast aggro deck seemed to have the better time of it generally. Um, like Kevin with his Lustredons and his Bunyips. Um, Sokol with his high bonuses. Uh, yeah. Even, even Forrest with his um, pirate rarities. Um, and so perhaps, I guess, perhaps Diamond could have benefited a bit more from higher bonus problems, maybe. Or three Bunyips to this speeder deck up a little bit, given the way the meta was. Yeah, uh, I would I would think like the meta was promoting a more faster aggro because like the two top decks that we have are Reanimator and Living to Off, and both kind of they're kind of slow. And if you win before they like start doing things, that's probably the only way for you to win. Mm -hmm. Like you can win before Reanimator really. Accelerate, so to say, and before leaving to love wins. Right. And I, I would assume this deck was a little bit too slow for that. Uh, yeah, seems likely. And would also lose to the to the faster aggro decks, kind of by definition yeah. as well. Yeah, but. Thorax Orange, always a very strong concept. Uh, Treading Water is still a great card. They're not going anywhere. So, nope. Certainly worth to keep uh, keep looking at. Bidding Ceremony is an interesting card. Did we see a lot of Frightened decks? Um... So, we had Reanimator who frightens with Luna. Mm -hmm. Uh. uh... But that's it, right? Well, I mean, there's Rogar all over the place. Ah, uh, yeah. It's not nothing. Did Diamond play against Pancake? Because I think this deck might actually be okay against Pancake's deck. With, like, Middlebrook's Mask and, like, the Wedding Ceremony is also Let pretty good. Me... And Thorax. Thorax can farm things on his own. Uh, I do actually have the schedule. The pairings? Yeah, let me see. So Kevin in round one, Forrest in round two, Pop Deck in round three, Silver Hooves in round four, uh, and then she drop one and four. So she played in round five. I think right after the stream, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, and then so Sokol round five. Mm. But no, she never played against uh, Pancake, unfortunately. Yeah, but I think this deck actually stands a chance against other farming decks, because look at how many tools against farming decks, decks it has. Mm -hmm. Limestone is really good. Wedding Ceremony is, I mean, situational, but still can like unfrightening things after a villain shows up. It's pretty good. Spooky Ruins. Meadowbrook's Meadowbrook Mask. So many things. Blindfold doesn't stop Pony of Shadows from working, right? Ah, uh, no, because it don't... Uh, does it say... I think it reveals it and doesn't look at... You don't look at them. Right. Yeah, I think... That's also... Oh, no. I wish Nova had Ember's text. Yes. <laughs> That'd be pretty good. The ultimate anti-farming card. You know, you can do that in Harmony. You can uh, put teamwork on Nova or teamwork on uh, Ember. Mm -hmm. Oh, and they're both royalty, aren't they? Yep. Ah, clever. That actually does so, sound super cool, yeah. So when uh, when you're against a farming deck, you play Nova, they're confused, and then you give Nova teamwork. 
and play Ember, and now they can't win faceoffs anymore because they actually have to, like, in order to win the faceoff, they have to lose it, which is very hard for many farming decks. <laughs> hmm. That's super interesting. Secret Harmony Tech. Oh, yeah. Black. Mm hmm. Um. Next up is Silver Hooves. With Nurturing Nature. Blue. A, uh. Would I say, would I call this traditional Nurturing Nature Blue? Not really. No. It's got a lot of the mm -hmm. traditional cards in it, but also some interesting ones. Yeah, I think a lot of like traditional, so to say, cards were lowered down a little bit to fit some other cards. For example, we have just one plushy dash, but uh, we also have Ember, which you don't usually see in aggro decks. Hmm. Now, honestly, with Ember, Spooky Ruins, Metabooks Mask, uh, even Fluttershy Pony Pirate, I'd say this this is kind of angled to work against farm as well. Yeah. You also have uh, Fluttershy Pony Pirate, which is a great troublemaker buster. Mm -hmm. And um, if you think of it, like, Candle of Citizens is also kind of a, an anti-farming tool because they confront problems, but they don't have to be at them. So if they have a villain, like you're still fine. And actually, we actually saw I don't remember who Silver, Silver Hoops played against, but we saw on stream that Control Citizens was like really good uh in the current meta. Because uh was he playing against Reanimator? Uh let I me think. see. Over yes. We saw him play against Cheese in round two. Yeah. So, like, one of the things about Reanimator is that Luna attacks, which cripples aggro decks significantly. But uh, this deck doesn't have to move anywhere or be anywhere. You just have to have things at home and you're good to confront. Mm -hmm. We didn't see him get, like, a Cloud Chaser and Flitter online at home as well, but that'd be... No. That would yeah, that would be great. Pretty awesome, yeah. Could legitimately... Well, certainly any problem in your deck, yeah. Especially given that Candlelight Citizens don't count against home limit. Yes. You could legitimately confront pretty much anything with all your characters at home. Yeah, as long as there's no troublemaker. But there we go. There's a turning point here. I think there was a moment on stream when I said, like, yeah, it wouldn't be amazing to like steal a, steal a troublemaker in right. this situation. And there's a card for that. This deck has it. Yeah. You can steal Grogger. You can steal Ponyo Shadows. Ponyo I don't Shadows remember. That's the one you specifically mentioned, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, you can. I think. I'm actually not sure what happens. Well, that card is main phase, so I guess it's not as interesting. Uh, you'd need, like, Sonic Rainboom to make it immediate. But if it was immediate, I wonder what happens if you steal a Troublemaker, like, during a face off with. That troublemaker. Um, How does that work? Well, you. Uh, turning point says you gain control of it with no time limit. So you just have it. Um, yeah, but what happens oh, to the face off? Right, happens to the face off. Ooh, that is like, this... a very interesting question. Like, I think your opponent still fights the troublemaker. But it's, but it is now. I, I maybe nothing interesting happens. Well, okay, so but you for sure get the trigger from the Ponyo Shadows. Uh, sorry, is this like in the situation where your opponent started a face off against the Troublemaker, or where you started yes. face off? Okay. No, they started a face off against their Troublemaker, but you steal it. Um, I don't believe that would cause any issues. Because... Okay, but what if it is not an epic? And oh no, if it's not an epic, it was your troublemaker. 
Yeah. Hmm. Well, I mean, it, it, it's it's possible for them to have challenged a troublemaker that's not an epic that's theirs. If it, what, um, Tree of Harmony works that way, doesn't it? Yeah, okay, a simpler situation. I challenge your troublemaker, and during that face-off, I steal it. What happens? Right, that's the question. I don't think... Um, I don't think the rules about which cards are involved in face-offs care about Troller. Well, they have to, because when we face off against each other, when they count our own cards. Well, yes. that I. Mm. But maybe not for Troublemakers. I mean, yeah, Troublemaker face-offs... I'll need to check if the stream. Let me... I mean, I can go find the comp rules right now. Not the, not the full rules. Welcome to Tangent Talks. I mean, yeah. <laughs> That's... How we do things. Uh, okay, so that would be in uh, that would be in the face off section, I imagine. Ba -do -ba -do -ba -do. Okay. Oh my cards go involved in the face off. Yada yada yada. Troublemaker. The challenger's characters at the troublemaker's problem are involved in the face off. So, the Troublemaker's involvement doesn't matter on who controls it, which, yeah. Yeah, doesn't seem like it. But the question is, if, if you... Yeah, yeah. yeah. The power. If, it, if it switches over to your side, I don't think that would matter. It's still you challenging the troublemaker. You can challenge troublemakers that you control anyway. And so, yeah. yeah. That's fair. Anyway, extend, yeah, as you say, extended tangent about, um, po about play situation that's not even possible given this deck that we're looking at. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's only half possible. It has one of the needed cards for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, regardless. Uh, yeah. We, uh, we saw some... Well, yeah, as you said, this deck seemed to work pretty well against Cheese. Uh, delivered a close, a close game because yeah, the, the sort mm -hmm. of mechanism by which it scores its points isn't, isn't really interfered with by Reanimator. And so... Yeah. It was able to keep pace by there being a Luna on the field. Yeah, it's it's nice to see a blue yellow after like huge nerfs that that it still can put up a fight. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. So next deck. Yes, the next deck is the one that we didn't get to see on stream. Up. Oh. Deck with Capper Blue. Is this the combo deck? Uh, I well, depends on your definition of combo, I guess. I mean, I see tough questions and uh, Granny Smith with Daybreaker, a combo of sorts. Well, yeah. There's nothing that like really lets you gain AT repeatedly. So suppose it's not like some people would still call it combo, but uh, not me. But yeah, the idea uh, from what I see is to use Daybreaker and Granny Smith and tough, tough questions to score a bunch of points. As well as like just do you know regular like farm or troublemaker shenanigans. Mm -hmm. Basically, this deck is designed to win faceoffs. Be that with the dread with daybreaker, be that troublemakers or faceoffs from effects. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like an uh, kind of like an augmented farming deck, I would say. Mm -hmm. Um. And I actually didn't look at this the first time that I was here. Uh, but Capper being the main, uh, how many odd cards do we have in here?
six. I think it's about two thirds even, I think. Oh no, there's, there's, uh, there's only one staff. So maybe a little bit more than two thirds. Yeah, but you kind of really want those troublemakers there. Mm -hmm. And Daybreaker, like the, the deck kind of rerolls around her, I feel like. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, this isn't, as you say, this isn't the the super combo where we're going to be getting max value from Capra every, every time. Uh, even even two or three cards is probably good. And you do have the Tempests to get multiple value out of her, uh, about uh, that, it, ugh, out of him. Yeah. Uh, and then you mix that in with uh, a relatively healthy amount of disruption as well with uh, It's Gonna Work and Rogar Slayer and Sons. Uh, and Stripes and Sands, like there's a lot of disruption in this deck. Mm -hmm. Sipokli attack, half of the deck is uh, disruption, I would say. Yeah. Tough question is also a disruption in a way. It, so it kind of serves double purpose it's here. It's true, yes. True. So, like, I wouldn't call this deck an aggro deck, that's for sure. No, no, definitely. It's, it's uh, in the middle between control and aggro. I would even say, like, closer to control than aggro. Right. Well, well, I, I would characterize it as a farming deck. Uh, and on the slower side of that, probably. Like pain. Six Troublemaker farming deck? Nah. Well, I mean, uh, three, uh, six epics Legion of Doom and Grogar. Yeah. It, well, it, 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 no, yeah, it, it's definitely not a pure farm. It, hybrid if if anything yeah it's like it's a weird mix of everything <laughs> i guess yeah what does being big is all it takes do again it's uh well i think the important all of the modes are really good for a deck like this one of them doesn't let uh, players win face-offs at all until the start of your next turn so if you're like afraid that your wall will go down you just play this card or another case when there's like a free bonus problem in play, and you don't want your opponent to like score it next turn. Being big, big as all X is a really good card for that. Another thing is that you move characters, I think, mm -hmm. uh, and the straight up gain control over an opposing friend. So it's a pretty good card. I think I think the most important mode here is uh, the last one and the second one. Like moving is also good in some cases when you like want to move daybreaker but if i had to guess second and the third modes might be used more mm -hmm. often although maybe i'm underestimate underestimating move move can be really important at times uh i mean uh, well yeah it's 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 efficient regardless um yeah like uh, that move is kind of crazy like you move each character from home somewhere to a problem so, like, if you have a bunch of stuff at home, you just play this card. Yeah, but uh, take control is a is a pretty big deal. Like, you know, we saw Reanimator put in uh, Zesty Gourmand for that reason. Yeah, um, it's it's especially good against Reanimator. <laughs> yeah. Well, kind of. It, you know, it, it, if they have a Luna out, they can just take their try going back by frightening it. But still, you frightened it. Still takes some effort to get it back. And mm -hmm. you, I mean, they could frighten us with Luna, but like you can oh. enable Big Brain and take Luna herself. If you start frightening their things, if you steal Twilight, then they can't take it back that way. One oh, yeah, because nothing can be frightened. Yeah. Yeah, see, both options work. So, like, the only thing you can't really steal is Cadence, then. And Pinky? Uh, Pinky would be a risk, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, yeah. 
we saw well yeah like i say we didn't see this uh, uh this deck on stream which is a shame yeah this seems like a really cool like i'm a fan of this kind of decks like being big is all it takes is like card that was like printed for me has the everything i need hmm. well it is in yeah it is in your colors i guess it's in my colors and like all three modes are really good next deck sure so uh next deck is ocellus orange from uh, uh histogram or he goes as jeff w sometimes uh uh he's got i would describe this well okay what what uh when i first looked at this i thought this was this is a pretty ambitious uh deck with the unity 15 applejack and the unity 15 rarity in the same deck um seems like wow uh but it, I, I on closer inspection it's not actually even that difficult to imagine yourself being able to get both of them, uh, given the amount of uh, power boosting that's in here, the the uh, resources and Ocellus self as well. Yeah, and the Ontis, but like if you get the Princess Mask on your Changeling, mm -hmm. it's already seven power. Because, like, look, all of these changelings have free power. Yeah. So that's seven power, and then you get, like, on team, maybe hard of the sea, and that's already ten. Like, it, nah, not too hard. Yeah. Like, uh, but, uh, yeah. Right. Well, yeah, I was going to say, like, you start in white, and then if you manage to activate Rarity's Unity 15, uh, then. Suddenly, you're putting a lot of power into play, given that that's probably going to be a princess mask or a Alagown or something. Um, and then, you know, then with a couple. Oh wait, this, oh maybe oh rush makeover is not in here. Um, yeah, that's what I was about to say. Like this deck could really use rush makeover. I feel like. Yeah, yeah, that's what I would think. And then, oh, you rush makeover something, and now suddenly you've got a pile of orange, and there you go. Yeah, I'm actually not, now that I look at it, I'm not sure how you're gonna get to. Oh, okay, yeah, you're not gonna get to 15 orange, but honestly, today is long's other text is super relevant because everything else is gonna have uh, four or more power, and you, and you yeah. just need to give her one more. Okay, that makes sense then. Yeah. But you know, Rush Makeover would still be really good to trigger Applejack's ability at least once. Mm -hmm. Triggering it once is enough to make Applejack protect herself, because I don't think she says others. And, uh, I mean, plus one power counter on the entire board is always good. Yeah. Another cool inclusion, I think, is uh, Chrysalis, because uh, not only she is like, useful against Reanimator, you can just banish things at immediate speed, like, oh, you discarded a tricorn? Nah. It's gone now. Mm -hmm. But it's also a changeling, so it still works with the rest of the deck, even if you don't play against Reanimator. Yeah, I, I didn't think about it, but like, given the way that Reanimator starts, it seems pr pretty reasonable that you, sh that you would open with Chrysalis. Yeah. Against Reanimator. I think like the I think the only tool that Reanimator has against Crystalis is Heatwave, right? Uh Heatwave or get a Luna out. Yeah, but like no, you're not getting Luna out. Well Crystalis is in play. Because as soon as that hits discard, I'll Well, the, the, the only way to do it would be to get it off of the top three cards of an Orchard Blossom. Yeah. Well, Orchard Blossom is so good. Mm 
We need a portal to Tartarus reprint. When the card enters discard pile, you can banish it. Um, but yeah, and then it's, there's... It's just a card and banish. Yeah. Uh, uh, sorry, I, I didn't quite catch that. Exhaust that card and banish it, I mean. Oh, I see, yeah, yeah. But that's that still wouldn't work, would it? Because that's a that's a well trigger. Portal to Tartarus is a reaction. Ah, yeah, you're right. It, like yeah. even if it was a trigger, it, it's well, still... if it's a replacement modifier, like if, if it's a replacement, yes. Well, that's how it should be printed. <laughs> Honestly, I could I could imagine that being a card that could exist. Just yeah. Any time a card would enter the discard pile, banish it instead. Oh, I felt like a one-time effect, but any time sounds good as well. It's like, I think if you make it any time... Well, I guess I guess Portal to Tartarus was purple. So I guess this card would also have to be purple. But that sounds like an interesting purple like resource, right? You put it in play, and as long as it is in play, they can't, they can't, they can't discard things, but they're going to be gone. And... About like the power, maybe that card, such card would be too powerful. But then again, we have like a zero cost pinky sense, which is a really powerful card. So I guess purple can have something like that as well. Yeah, yeah, maybe it's like a, little... a zero cost. Uh, yeah, maybe make it cost a little bit more. But well, I mean, so why I think it should be zero? So pinky sense is like almost universally useful, right? But this card is only useful against specific decks because I I will go out there and say that most of the decks actually don't care about their discard pile, and if things get banished, great. Doesn't matter. Like, Pretty do you much. know many aggro decks that care about discard pile? Nope, I don't. Uh, I mean, there's some fringe stuff. We see double diamond in here. Um, but in general. Well, actually, wait a second. Um, how would that interact with Fire of Friendship? You, uh, you Fire have... of Friendship is a replacement thing as right. well. So you'd have two replacements trying to affect the discard. Well, depends on how you word it, because if you word it when the card enters discard pile, then like Fire, I think, works when you like before it enters discard pile. It, right. It replaces entering itself. But I guess that thing would replace it too. Well, it's somewhere there in the rules, but I think the turn player processes their replacements first. Uh, actually, I, I was I was just reading about this. The turn the player who is affected by the replacement, i.e., the player who's who's controlling the modifier that or, or thing that's getting replaced, uh, chooses which of the relevant replacement modifiers. Wow. It will happen. So, yeah, if you control the fire, then you always choose the fire's replacement, right? Uh, yes. Unless you want it banished for some reason. But yeah, it will be an interesting card, actually, I think. Be. Either way, that's a yeah. tangent told. Uh, yeah. Here we go. <laughs> this is why our review streams take 10 hours. Um, it doesn't even have purple. <laughs> uh, anyway. I, 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 yeah, this was the one we saw Jeff on stream kind of get burned by uh, not being able to get into orange. Yeah. I think, yeah. But uh, he did he did okay in the rest of the tournament. Uh, two and five, so. I mean, to be fair, this deck is so greedy. It's only two fires, I think, right? Uh, oh, yeah. Two fires, uh, and infiltrating. Oh yeah, infiltrating. But that's still really greedy. Even I'm not that greedy. I would put three fires. <laughs> Probably, yeah. Many people recommend like five to six entry for enough color, but when you want to be greedy, you put three. And apparently, if you want to be really greedy, you put two. But I guess the like the lack of entry in this deck 
is because there's no there, there aren't that many orange cards. I mean, yeah. Like and once you get one fire, you're pretty much good to go. You uh you want to just like a uh, double diamond you don't even intend to play. You just want to discard him. Um, yeah. Big Mac is entirely a tech card. Applejack is kind of garnish, not your sort of main purpose deck. Heatwave is useful to be able to play. Yeah. We've got three of them in there, but one fire will do it. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd say three fires would be a good, probably a good idea. Probably a, it's a it, it's a good default to have when you're building the deck, and then if you really don't need them, then you cut it to two. Yeah. Or maybe Rush Makeovers, as we mentioned. Right. Next deck. Next deck. Oh, I haven't loaded it yet. Uh, this. Well, yeah. We now get into the top eight, and this is Pancakes Farm, the deck that I so I, I was advertising it and pushing it so hard on stream. Uh, and I mean, you know, he made top eight. He he was fifth seed. He didn't do badly in the tournament by any stretch of the imagination. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh. Legacy leads too strong, basically. Yeah, Legacy Leech wins games out of nowhere. Pretty much. Um, but we did see this one uh, do okay against uh, against Reanimator. Granted, it was the sort of friendly match after he drew awfully during the one that actually counted. Um, but uh, yeah. The uh, primary idea is um, the friends are all very high impact when they get pulled off of Pony of Shadows. Um, the events are very limited because he did not want to get burned by Cadence too much. Mm -hmm. And a lot of powerful resources because there aren't that many ways to deal with them in the meta right now. Good. And once Spooky Ruins is on the field, then opponent can't put Mysterious Disappearance anymore. And otherwise, yeah. it's a farm deck. Yeah, I mean, it mostly looks like, like, mostly looks kind of like a, I would say, standard farm deck. You have Plushy Dashes, you have Sticks, you have pretty much all of the troublemakers you can get. Uh, I guess it doesn't have Storm King. But probably because Stormkin kind of like there's nothing, there's no forced movement in the meta right now, mm -hmm. so Stormkin kind of only gets in the way. And uh, Flash Flash Magnet Shield goes in any form deck that uses blue. Uh, so Nameless Blindfold, I guess, is against uh, for free animator on leaving to love. As a tech, it's the only uh, pink card here. I see. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it was a relatively last minute addition, I think. Um, to try and shore up those two matchups, yes. And Spooky Ruins with the Sonambulous Blindfold must be brutal for Reanimator. Um, pretty much, yeah. Yeah, as I as I kind of mentioned on stream, Spooky Ruins obviously helps the farm. Um, because you know this is uh, playing with Seleno. Uh, as opposed to some of the like more traditional farming mains from the long, long ago, um, you're not as secure in, in your face-offs as you used to be. Uh, if, mm -hmm. you, if you have a staff and a shield out, then yes, but less so. Uh, so anything that, that helps is good. Uh, and both Living to Laugh and Reanimator, if they sort of miss on their openings, can be in a position where they want to draw during the main phase. And a good counter to it. Yep. Yeah. We've seen Cheese actually draw a lot of cards in that friendly game. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I guess like two most interesting additions here are Sanctuary Scuffle and Riled Up. Sanctuary Scuffle is a great board wipe, especially against the uh, Reanimator. Mm -hmm. And Riled Up is... A, uh, you you were kind of like teasing that like oh there's a secret weapon in this deck and that's riled up yep against heatwave because heatwave is 
number one disruption that decks run nowadays. It's like it's like belly flop of all times, but it's heat wave now. Pretty much, yeah. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll, often enough, the deck saves that heat wave. They get okay. That's that's a turn that I'm I'm gonna get because you're not gonna be able to beat your uh, troublemaker or whatever, and uh, that's what riled up is for. You're you're never gonna get that. Well, actually, possible that you get the unity seven. Or a little bit of stuff in play, but it's not super relevant. That yeah, it's not as relevant. Immediate speed, ready a character. That is what you're looking for. Mm-hmm. But yeah, uh, he played against Cheese, I think. Yeah. In the in the in the knockout round, it was four C. No, oh, he played against Ivory in the in the knockout round. Um, and I think, well, yeah, as I said, Legacy leads too strong, basically. Yeah. Alrighty. Yeah, I'm glad he seeks to farm. Someone asked you. It's always yeah, it's always cool to see. Like, it's better this way than not having farm at the tournament. Because cheese, cheese used to play control, but he betrayed control. Uh, well, he got does it... talked into it by Grand Foz. Thanks. If he had Traitor. actually had the had the choice to bring his own deck, uh, I don't know. He probably still wouldn't have played control, honestly. Yeah. This was a. Oh well, maybe next set. Yeah, who knows? I sure hope so. Uh, okay, so next up is Kevin with his very interesting Thorax purple list. Uh, we saw this on stream a couple times. Most notably in his yeah. top eight match against Grand Paws, uh, where he got somewhat lucky with his entry. Very good at finding Lusterdon when he needed her. I think at the, in all of the games we've seen, like the turn two play was like move Thorax, play Lusterdon, or something like that. I think I think he hit that like one hundred percent of the times on, on stream. I think he did, yeah. So just like we saw Reanimator, like always turn do one. the Orchard Blossom. Yeah, thing, yeah. Same with this deck. Hmm. Interestingly uh, enough, we didn't see Royal Guards at all. That's true. Yeah, you see that card, you expect it to be like the cornerstone of the deck, and uh, I mean, it is a thing that the deck can do, but no, we never saw it get played. But with um, three Lusted Arms and three Bunyips, uh, as, as we saw, yeah, this, this deck can, uh, can score points real fast. Um, Uh, okay, maybe not the fastest aggro that was there. Sokol's deck could go pretty fast too. Um, yeah, but a, a, a very consistent implementation of it for sure. Um, and with the school shutdowns and the legacy leeches, self uh, had a kind of uh, a credible defense against both Reanimator and Living to Laugh. Yeah, just uh, play Legacy Lich before your opponent does, because so I didn't. If you were playing Living to Love, would you expect any purple deck to run Legacy Lich? Because that's the thing. Like, who plays it first ga gains an enormous advantage. And mm. if you, if like a Living to Love player doesn't expect that the opponent has it, they will just hold it off until like the moment that they need it. And then you pull out this surprise, like, "Hey, but I actually also run like Silage." Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's it's tough to answer that question uh, about like the pre-tournament meta now, because uh, it's it's easy to say, "Well, now obviously you expect it," because everyone knows it's a yeah a, a, an amazing card. Um, I certainly assume the people who are at Continentals, really good players, knowing that the opponent had some purple wreck. Would have considered the possibility 
Um, you know, this being a relatively, well, I don't want to say it's event light. It's got uh, 6, 8, 10, 12 of them in there. Um, but it's not like my deck. It's not got a yeah. pile of events in it. So you might, it, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's, not, it's, it's not immediately clear if it would be something you'd expect to be there or not. You could, I mean, during the Swiss rounds, yeah, I could see you uh, catching some people by surprise with that. Yeah. I mean, in top 8, you can't really catch people by surprise anymore because they see your deck list. Unless they're inattentive, which can also be if it. During, uh, I mean, what did we see during the Living to Laugh mirror? There were. Like generally, living to laugh can set it up so that it sort of plays six or seven or eight events on its turn, and then legacy leeches. Yeah. Um, which you know, fair enough. That's something you can do. Still better to better to hit them early when you can. Yeah, at least deny them something. But yeah, I like this deck on stream. It it was interesting. Mm -hmm. We saw a lot of Luster Dawn action. We saw a lot of Bunny action. Yona was really helpful too. Yep. Uh, I think, if I recall correctly, after the after the elimination stream, Grand Paws recommended that uh, the the Starlight Glimmers could potentially be Sunbursts instead. Yeah, uh, which makes a lot of sense. Um. It. Um, yeah. Th sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, like uh, the reason Sun Burst is better is because he he has exactly the same ability. He has an extra ability that whenever you confront, which this deck does a lot, you drain one AT, which is really good. Or or was it when opponent confronts? It's one of those. Uh, when and opponent it confronts, has, I think it, actually, but yeah, yeah, it has exactly the same wreck because uh, Starlight has one purple wreck and uh, Sun Burst has yellow purple, but you always have yellow anyway. And it has one less power, which is actually net zero power for this deck, because Sunburst having one less power means one more power for Torx. Hmm. And Sunburst has Calming, too. Yeah, Fair. Calming is amazing. My especially sorry. when people forget about it. Calming as well. He has Calming 1, actually, I think. Um, but, yeah. But, yeah, yeah. As, as, as you say, it's, uh, it's a often relevant ability. Yeah, people forget about it all the time. And by people, I mean me. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, I'm putting a bunch of tokens there. I confront this problem. No, all of your tokens have zero power. It's like, oh, no. Ah, yeah. That's a uh, that's an awesome... Well, it'd be, it'd be an awesome play against uh, Pancake's Raptor Razor. Just yeah. Have that, have that sitting there and all those tokens are... No, oh, there's, there's zero. Right now, Pancake wouldn't be calming. Probably not. He's a good player. He wouldn't catch that. Um, and we saw the uh, the school shutdown be quite relevant as well. Uh, yeah. Usually, as as we noted, the player who played school shutdown lost the game each time. Yeah. <laughs> I I liked Cheese's comment that like. Both players look at the board state and they're like, "Oh yeah, I want to clean this," mm -hmm. because it was it was both Kevin and Cheese. Uh, I was, think it was Grandpa. No, it actually. wasn't Cheese. Oh, Grandpa's. Yeah, was it? Maybe it was because I remember Cheese making that comment, but maybe I'm just remembering wrong. But yeah, it was a good comment that like both players look at the board state and both of them want to play school shutdown. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, okay. Next up is Sokol. It's a Selena deck. I'm uh, ready yeah. to hear your gasps. I mean, it's it's not even that it's a Selena deck. I mean, I think he's played this exact list before, actually. Um, a, a little while ago, was it? Yeah, like it doesn't have a single new Dawn card, so you might be right. Uh, Continentals last year, I think. Um, but uh, it, you know what they say. Uh, it, it's he didn't even uh, put in a sideboard. 
this is just uh, still a 45 card deck. Um, yeah. But, if uh, it works, don't touch it. Yeah, absolutely. Why not, right? Still, still what? Four and three? Yeah. Seven seed? Made into top eight round? Mm hmm. Uh, and yeah, all the all the pieces in here still do what they're supposed to do. Um, you have a limited. Uh, hmm, I'll say maybe. Actually, you have about as much ability to farm troublemakers. Well, not as much as pancake does. You have staff. But you do still have shield and daybreaker and plus you dash. Um, yeah. Loyal sea pony for what it's worth is pretty good tech. Uh, transforming. Dash and mullet is what you want to do most of the time. Um, although... And a swift four power is always good. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've got... Sorry. A lot of ways to score plenty of extra points with Blockwall and Daybreaker. Um, good efficient movement. You did own epics, like I said. Oh, right. NMY mentions in the chat. Yeah. There are updates that could be made. Uh, Tyrant's Reputation being the one that's tested now and probably a better starting problem than what he was working with. Mm hmm. And if we think in terms, of, in terms of meta, this deck doesn't actually have a lot of tools against Reanimator. Uh, no. Other than going fast. Uh, yeah. Even Sepakli attack isn't that good. Yeah. So I, fighting doesn't do anything. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, Sepakli attack and well, I mean, stop fighting could hit a Orchard Blossom or something. But yeah. Um, both Why, of them. <laughs> yeah. Both of them are useless if Twilight's in play, and cost a whole heck of a lot if Cadence is in play. Yeah. And that that covers pretty much half the boards that you'd want to disrupt already. But if you're just in mono blue like this deck is, I don't even know what do you do when Twilight hits play. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was the right choice to not have any disruption for this. Just... Uh, that was the conversation that I had with Pancake for like a week and a half as we tried to figure out what to do with this deck. Like maybe there's a value in just going faster instead of trying to disrupt. Uh... <laughs> Because trying to disrupt a uh, reanimator when you're playing mono blue is a really uphill battle. Because you only have so many tools and like all of them are countered by one card. So yeah, maybe going faster is the answer. Could be. Could be. And I mean, yeah, like I said, he he got to top eight. He mm -hmm. had a good showing with it. Next deck. Sure. Next deck is our last Delano deck. As as was kind of mentioned in the sort of after stream, uh, Selena was actually the most popular main at the uh, at the con. Uh, with four right, four different. Maybe it was only three. three. I think. Yeah, three. I guess. Still, that's more than anyone else. Yeah, and all three Solana decks are vastly different. Yep. Uh, so yeah, this one is Solana White. A uh, well, Sokol had built it, built his to be Solana White at some point. Um, but it's not a pure blue-white aggro. Oh, this deck is like very different from what Sokol built, and like it's still the same colors. It's blue-white. Yeah, but the idea and the gameplay loop, like they are very different. Sokol's blue white was all about flipping Selena back and um, scoring points. But mm -hmm. this deck isn't. This deck is uh, mostly control. I would say, yeah, there are some point acceleration tools, but uh, control decks have those. Like remember photo finish. Remember Blackmail? Those I mean, are point acceleration tools. It's it true enough. Uh those are kind of 
on off to one side of the point acceleration tools. Uh, but yes, the point stands. Because like other than Pony Pirate and I guess a couple of movement cards, everything else here is controlish. Uh, I mean buckball, but yeah. Yeah. Um. Okay, let me put it this way. There are as many aggro cards in this deck. Uh, I mean, not not like multiples, but like individual cards. Mm -hmm. uh, as there are fingers on my hand. So there's bug wall, that's one. Right. Change that can change. I've never seen your hands. I don't know there's only five fingers oh, okay. on there. <laughs> it's fine. No, no. Uh, sorry, buckball. Change That's not change. true. You saw my you saw my hands once. That is true. I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> um. Yeah. Sorry, you were listing the cards. Yeah, change link that can change buckball, pony pirate, rescue party. I suppose. Greta. I mean, Loyal Pony and Greta, I think they, yeah. like, Loyal Pony can just go in the control deck as well. Yeah. Just a good card. Those are more. Greta, maybe utility. a little bit less, yeah. though. So, yeah. Everything else here is mostly like disruption and uh, control right. or recursion. So, yeah, I would say this deck is heavily leaning towards control at the very least. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the problem deck. Is a hint in that direction as well. If you wanted to make an easier problem deck, you could. Uh, but yeah. the inclusion of down the drain and prospecting and interruption, even mystery to some greater or lesser extent, all kind of hints that you're wanting to go a bit slower. Yeah. We saw this deck against Reanimator. Uh, I remember, I, th I think it was Reanimator, right? Because I remember. For us struggling to put spoons in play, the the Shows first getting, right. Well, yeah, the the uh, the first time we saw it was against Ivory, pretty sure. Combo, uh, but I think I think we saw it against Reanimator too at some point. Right. Yeah, table again. I think at top eight it was uh, Reanimator, right? Uh oh, okay. he was eight seed though. No, he uh, he uh, would have uh, he would have played against Bugle in top eight. Mm. And he was yeah, I remember he was he played Kevin in the last stream match of Swiss. And then yeah, before that it was Ivory. I don't think we ever actually saw him play against Reanimator. Huh? Maybe I'm. But like I remember for certain, he couldn't put things into play, mm -hmm. spoons specifically. Well, I mean, because it would be frightened immediately. Like I am so sure in that. Well, anyway. Anyway. I I really like this deck. Uh, I really like that it's not like the other Selena decks. It was, I was, uh, like. On stream, I was kind of like interested to see what this deck is about when I saw like spoons in hands and uh, what I think Throne we also saw on stream. So, um, Sans, yeah, yeah, Sans, Sans actually did pretty good in one of his matches from what mm -hmm. I remember. Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, in uh, in the uh, the match against Kevin, if I recall correctly, he was able to name Luster. Uh, yeah, he named uh, he named Luster and Yona because he played two cents. That's what I re I remember now. But yeah, it's a really cool controllish deck. Maybe maybe we'll get white control at some point because so far we have like decks leaning towards control, but not right. white control. Yeah, I mean, I sh I I sure hope so. Uh, Chrysalis can do pretty good white control. Mm -hmm. Um, something, yeah, something along these lines. I could see something like this emerging and doing better. Future. All right. Uh, so we have top. Uh, we're top four, but only two decks left to actually talk about. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe there were no differences at all between cheese and ivory stack. Or sorry, cheese and composite deck. I think there were a lot of differences between cheeses and ivory deck. <laughs> yeah, between uh, I think Rainy Mider were exactly the same list. I'll double check. Oh, this is GPs anyway. Yeah, they're exactly the same. Right. Uh, and I think the only difference between what we between this and what we saw, like on the sim stream, is the addition of the Zesty Gourmand. Oh, and oh no no no, because there were only two school shutdowns in that list as well. So so some small changes. Um, but in in general, uh. We saw a lot of this on stream. Yeah. Um, we, we saw them be somewhat frighteningly consistent, honestly, in the, in the opening of Village Yeah, they were getting Orchard Blossom. Over to Orchard Blossom. Yeah. Yeah, every time. Like, and, I, I don't know if it was, like, I think it was mostly luck, right? Because you can't. Like you can't really be that consistent in getting free cards all the time. Uh, One out of free cards all yeah. the time. Yeah. And even like you also need rushed makeover, so like it's even more unlikely. So maybe it was like a statistical anomaly, so to say, rather than actual consistency. Yeah. I mean, I, I it, it's it is definitely one of those decks where. If you're playing against it, it's gonna feel like, oh, you got Orchard Blossom again. You, it, that happens every time I play against this deck. Which, well, yeah. <laughs> even though we saw them miss sometimes, uh, like after getting school shut down, or um, even just a couple times off the start. I think you know, uh, Grandpa's made plays into Catchy Song instead on occasion. Yeah, which I guess that is kind of the the redundancy of the, that you have. If you if you didn't draw Archer Blossom, well, Catchy Song is still not a bad choice, um, and it's possible to get there too. Have we seen Smolder and Sandvar being played? I don't. Oh, there's just a single copy in there. So. Yeah, I don't think I even saw them in hand or anyone, not being even not like not even to mention being played. Right. That's the cut that was made. Because I, I remember the the sim like announced list had three soldier and sandbars in. And so yeah, those are the two that came out to make way for Zesty and the second school shutdown. Um Smolder and Sandbar is usually used as a sort of one way to bridge your entry. Um because it's it can be played with just one from student six and an an orange, um, so at the cost of two more AT, it is another way to get to Orchard Blossom rather than rushed makeover. Hmm. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's eight AT to work rather than six, as you can do with rushed makeover. And it is, uh, a Smolder and Sandbar is a discard outlet, if you need it to. Yeah. Um, yeah, to me, this deck, like, the... I think the main reason this deck is so strong, at least the way I see it, is not all of the Strike Horns, is not all of the Reanimator tools, it's the Golden Parachute. I think this, without the Golden Parachute, this deck becomes significantly worse. Because, I mean, Twilight has her very annoying ability, but with Golden Parachute, you need to basically, to remove a single, at least a single card from their board, you need to try really hard. You need to remove it twice and maybe even thrice. Yep. Before anything happens to it. Yeah, and you usually, uh, even if the method that you're using is Yona, Sitting at a problem confronting, you know, they're not going to let that stand. They're not going to, yeah, 
they're either going to steal it or else they're going to do a DFO and move everything home or yeah. Yeah. Um, like Rainmaker was good before, but with Golden Parachute, that I think that's the card that really, really pushes us, pushes it to the top, at least in my opinion. Yeah, I I think I agree. Uh, like actually, any new Dawn cards are even in here. Heatwave, Rushed Makeover, and Pinky. Uh, and that is actually it. Draw deck. Yeah, that makes sense. And just prospecting interruption in, 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 the, in the problem deck. That problem is so good. It, it, it's, it's crazy. I, I'll admit to being a little bit surprised at just how, how you? big of a deal it was. Yeah, yeah, because you know it's you know at the uh, at the sort of sticker level, three, three, seven. Okay, that's a good control problem. Um, yeah, but it denies your opponent points. That's like reverse blackmail. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and you know, yeah, you can say okay, that's that's a big deal, sure. Um, but and and I guess it's it's worth it to point out that when the set was revealed, we were in an aggro meta. Uh, like everyone was going super fast, it you know it was kind of something to say. All oh, the opponents is going to play a dilemma and you know, get their points anyway. But um, yeah, it, it really wasn't until this con that I I, I, I kind of saw it in action. It's like yeah, that, that like so many boards where the opponent just I mean, first of all, the math in that your your DFO that used to be three points is now just two, which is a big deal. Yeah. Um, and that you don't have to worry about defending it. If, if, if your opponent's never going to single confront it, especially with your playing a student six, as, as we saw, it, that it's actually harmful to you to confront this problem. Um, and yeah, it, it just it just makes aggro's life so much harder to have it there. Yeah, I want to find the scores that we gave this card. On the, uh, I can I can dig those up. I'll bet you. Let me yeah, I can't. I don't have like the spreadsheet on hand. Uh, rating. Oh, uh, which which spreadsheet did I put this? One of them. Be this one, I expect. New Dawn. Uh, prospecting interruption. You gave it a four. Okay. Pages and I gave it a three. So I was wrong, and you guys were extra wrong. I mean, do you do you do you think it's a five? Honestly. I mean, we see this card in the top two deck. It is if, like uh, what else is five? I mean, <laughs> uh, okay, I guess. Fair point. And I think if we saw, like, if there was a, like, a strong competitive control deck, you bet it would run this card. But even a non control deck run this. Like, I, honestly, it's a, it's not like as strong as blackmail, but it's compared to everything else we have as far as problems go, it's, it's there. It's one of the strongest ones. Eh, yeah. At least for slow games. I can see that, I suppose. Four was like, what? The, uh, what's four indicates? I kind of forgot. Uh, Is it in some competitive play? Yeah, like frequent, yeah, consistent competitive play. Okay, yeah, I guess then it is a four. It's not really meta defining. Yeah, that's right. It's like my scores are usually more more like clumped in the middle. It's unlikely I will give something a five unless it's like, wow. In any event, you're definitely more right than us, regardless of uh -huh. if you're actually exactly right or not. <laughs> now let's count everything I was wrong about. <laughs> oh, we'll get to that eventually. Yeah. Very soon, I would, so, uh, I would assume. Uh, yeah. 
uh, new, uh, fond memories is coming. Mm -hmm. And the the I don't think there's going to be any major play before then, probably. Ah, uh, depends. Like, I don't know if the set will be released before Ciderfest or after Ciderfest. There might be something at Ciderfest. If Ciderfest even is a thing, I don't know. Could be. I mean, yeah, that's a a story for another time, really. Yeah, but th but that's the only thing, I think. Uh, shall we have a look at Living to Laugh? Yeah. The, uh, the, the eventual winner of the tournament. Uh, we saw it played in a variety of contexts. We saw it played against Reanimator in the final, of course. Uh, we saw the mirror. And we saw Bugle and Ivory both... No, did we see Bugle during the Swiss rounds? I think we did. Swiss? I th we, we saw everyone except Top Deck, so yeah, we must. Oh, right, yeah. Hey, guys. Uh, Don't remember. Yeah, I can't remember now. I think uh, he was playing against Reanimator deck, right? Maybe not. I'm not sure. I don't think... No, no, I don't think so. Anyway. Either way, uh, I yeah. think now it's time to look at that spreadsheet and see what we gave Legacy. <laughs> I mean, while I've got it here, Let's see. Vance. I don't think it. Yeah, it, it, it was. It was definitely too low. Uh oh. No. Uh, fours across the board. No. Which I mean, yes. Fair enough. The card's definitely a five. Um. But yeah, we, uh, we we didn't underestimate it that much. Yeah, four or five, and close enough. So this deck is a rebirth of the old deck before Featherbanks got banned. In a way, I would call it a reincarnation. Same yeah. idea, different form. Mm -hmm. So, before we used Featherbanks and uh, what's their name again? Applejack and Binky. Back Draw a bunch of cards. Yeah. Yep, those ones. But now that Featherbanks is banned, it's not like as good anymore. You can't as easily get a lot of tokens, and it's annoying. Why don't we just put a bunch of events that draw you cards, and events also equal to AT, one-to-one -one conversion ratio? So, well, not not one-to-one -one per se. Uh, yeah, you pay free, I suppose. But well, I mean, given that you pay zero for some of them. Um... It's it's a lot better than you might think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, not only some of them cost zero. You pay like most of them end up in your discard pile, not because you play them, but okay. because you discard them. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and then couple that with the ability to draw from a variety of other sources, uh, the ability to troll, you discard some. Kind of protect your hand a little bit with Pinky Sense. Um, and you can get there surprisingly quickly. Um, yeah. The the Pinky, the, the, uh, the Living Flap Mirror obviously wasn't a representative example. But in general, I want to say I'm around 10 turns. Maybe less than that. Yeah. I mean, the reason this deck, this deck works the way it does is clear because, like, why why did we see such explosive turns with Legacy Leech? Mm -hmm. But that's that's because every event, uh, like, if we exclude the free AT part, every event is one AT as long as you discard it. So, and one AT is one card because you can pay one to draw always. Which means if the deck has like most of the deck is events, that means that like all of the events you draw also kind of like draw you a second card in a way. So you may think about it as like every event you draw and discard, you kind of draw an extra card for that. You just have to play Legacy Leech at some point. Hmm. 
it's and given that the deck is, it. yeah yeah and given that the most of the deck is events that kind of like follows and you also have speedfire which yeah basically reduces your deck size by three as well yeah another thing that uh uh no i forgot another thing that i wanted to say so you can go ahead if you wanted to say something Uh, uh, not not really. I think we we saw pretty plenty of this deck, and and we know that um, Legacy Leech is. Uh, well, I guess we don't know when exactly, but action will be taken. Yeah. Of which, I mean, I'm I'm sad, of course, but I think we all saw well enough. That this card... Yeah, but I mean, don't be sad yet. We don't know what action will be taken. It's, uh, it's true. It's true. From what I've heard, like the idea is to rework it a little bit, not not just outright like, oh, right, this and, card won't exist anymore. And that is the advantage of being in the print and play era. Um, yeah, it, it is a lot easier to tweak cards rather than um, just get rid of them entirely. Yeah. If only magical misfire was still legal in core. I think it's it's not unreasonable to expect at least something similar in the future. Mm -hmm. Given that, okay. you know, as mentioned, purple does have this kind of banished synergy going on. Um, more ways to banish cards in purple seems reasonable. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, but yeah. Uh, did you want to go on to Harmonies? Well, we've been here for like one and a half hours. Yeah. So, I don't know. It's up to you. Uh, yeah. Un unfortunately, my, my day is pretty packed. Um, so I think we will probably call it there. Yeah, but, uh, long story short, Harmony had Trixie and, like, all of the score decks. So Harmony was a better event, at least from my perspective. Harmony was real fun. Um, Pixie... Let's take a quick look. What was it? So, yeah, uh, Grandpa's and Ivory were both playing Pixie. Bugle brought back Purple Pink, because of course he did. Um, and didn't lose a game with it, because of course he did. Uh, we have a Demon's little... Plate Control. Hmm? A, a bit of... Let me take a quick look at her deck. I imagine so it's crystal mostly circle. core legal. Yeah. It, it, no, I mean, it has a uh, lot of uh, EO cores. There's a, a fair number of other ones, yeah. But it, it, it's, it's, it's kind of a skeleton of what, yeah. what core chrysalis looks like. Um, yeah, yeah, it seems I, like we had a couple of aggro ducks here and there, too. Yeah. I'd recommend everyone to go give it a look, regardless. Uh, I mean, I guess yeah. There's there's no telling on the future of what exactly Honeyville Cider Fest looks like, or what kind of games will be played there, if games even will be played there. Uh, but it's it's a, about time to have another semi-serious harmony event, probably. Yeah, I mean, when Hoover will have will be harmony for sure, right? It will for sure. That's right. So that's at least one like. We're guaranteed at least one Harmony event per year, so there is that. Absolutely. Uh, well, anyway, as as you kind of alluded to, never doubt our ability to stretch out a stream, it seems. Uh, yeah. With tangential jibber-jabber. We've discussed a couple of uh, rules questions. We've designed the card. Uh, we've talked about decks that... Uh, Cards that aren't even in the deck or in colors that we're discussing. Mm -hmm. We can do a lot of things with time. Yeah. On that note, um, we are going to be departing from our regular schedule uh, for our next stream. We, uh, we are currently on the same weekends as Commentary's Magic, which is uh, it's not something that either of us really want. Uh, so yeah, we are going to have a stream next week 
to and, and then two weeks after that staggered uh and we're doing something a little special for that well yeah something i don't think we have ever done before uh yeah yeah absolutely um those of you been sort of paying attention to matters outside the mlp cg lately uh may be familiar with the uh project that was started by former community member i guess still current community member uh Dread arcana game that he calls pony wars um we have been uh asked to do a review of it and we will next week yep yeah, well tell a little bit about the game uh and provide our honest opinion on it absolutely uh we have uh we haven't actually had the chance to play it yet we've been kind of working over the rules um in our practice matches this week, so I, I I can tell you honestly that I'm excited to get the chance to play it. But oh well, yeah, save the opinions for next week. Mm. Uh, anyway, I will not spoil anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair point. Uh, anyway, let me go get the YouTube link here. Uh, yeah, if you enjoyed this stream and want to see any of our prior content, uh, you can find us there over on YouTube. No pressure, but feel free to leave us a like or a subscription or whatever and what have you. Um, yeah, as stated, next week we're going on a different schedule, so it'll be August 28th, uh, and then two weeks on after that. Otherwise. You have nothing else to say, Hithrock? Nope. Uh, then I have been Curse Accords. I've been Hiprock. And we will see you next week. Bye.